Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk, and today I'm going to talk about Dead Until Dark by Charlene Harris. If you're familiar with the True Blood series on HBO that just finished up, I think, this last summer, this is the book series that inspired it. I'm going to start with my overall feelings for this book. It is definitely a candy story, and the definition with me and my friends of candy story is it's fun to read, it's not emotionally heavy, and it's just, it's fun. Is there another way to say that it's like a fun read? There's nothing extremely deep and heavy to it. I'm just, I think I'm just repeating what I've said in the first sentence. The first sentence was enough. I really am such a fan of the TV show. I'm almost through with the seventh season. I started it and I think if I hadn't pressed pause so heavily because I didn't want the TV series to end, I would have been done with it all in a, mo a one month period. That's seven seasons in one month. That's crazy. I really loved the show. And so I thought, you know what? I, I have to read the books because great things come from books, right? Right? Anyway, the first season of the show, I actually do prefer to this book. That being said, I really do like Charlene's uh, style of writing and how it's funny. And I actually liked being in Sookie's head, which I wasn't sure I would like, but I actually did end up liking. Also, um, I wasn't the biggest fan of villain this. I don't know if it's because... I know a thing that happens later, this is me not spoiling. In case you're not familiar with the channel, I have a section ahead where I don't spoil, which is now, where I give a general synopsis and very vague ideas to the rest of the book. But then I will give warning and jump into the spoilers. I felt like that was a necessary thing because I feel like this book is widely popular and so I needed a quick little explanation. Back to the point though. So I was talking about Bill, right? Yes, Bill. Vampire Bill. I love how they called him that, the Vampire Bill. Vampire Bill. Not just Bill. Vampire Bill. Love that. So maybe I just, you know, I'm sour apples against Bill because I know something that happens and it's just kind of come back from this. I don't know. For those of you who did not watch the series beforehand and you just read the book, let me know in the comments whether you liked Bill from the get-go or not. I don't know. Let me know. I'm curious. Suki Stackhouse is a waitress in this small town in Louisiana, Bon Tom. Don bon Tom? I'm, I'm from Texas and I can't even do the accent. I'm so ashamed. But she's not just this waitress. She's different. She's a telepath. She can hear people's thoughts. The world that Charlene created is a very... I don't know, almost modern vampire story. I am, I read some Anne Rice. I've of course read the Twilight books when they were out. And so I have a little bit of background in the vampire type of things. I've read a couple different series involving them. And I thought that this was just a really unique twist on them. So vampires have come out of the coffin. See, that's the kind of funny I'm talking about. And they're known in the world that there are vampires and they sell this thing which is called synthetic blood in the book, which I thought the TV show was very clever, the true blood thing, props there. But they sell like synthetic blood, it's a common thing that you can find in supermarkets. And so vampires are just like this daily part of life in certain places that happen to have more vampires, like New Orleans. I know I say that weird. Bill doesn't exactly have the best reputation, he hangs out with a seedy crowd of vampires. And then when someone is murdered, a co-worker of Suki's, she doesn't know whether she's next. So that is it for the non-spoilers. I am going to now jump into the nitty gritty of it all. I'm going to give away the ending and talk about the little details that I want to talk about. So if you do not want to be spoiled, don't watch the rest of this. Go and read it and then watch the rest of this. Bye. So guys, I have a confession. How I normally write notes when I read books. At the very least, make little notes on my cell phone. I, I didn't write any notes because it was just a fast-paced story and I didn't I don't know I felt like I'd remember it so well because of the TV show being very linear to this and I just I didn't write notes so we're winging it I think I might have wrote down one thing because I thought it was funny so we're gonna start with that and then we're just gonna see what happens oh the descriptions there were small moments where okay I'm a sucker for descriptions uh, you guys know that and there were a couple that I really really loved and I'm gonna read you to that was a word. Okay. I'm going to read you, though. His voice was quiet and rustling, like feet through dry grass. His eyes were still like caves with ghosts dwelling in their depths. That's my favorite one from the entire book. I was worried going into this book that I wouldn't like Bill because TV show Bill, I kind of only liked him because of the way that he treated Jessica. Because it was like that very loving, fatherly kind of relationship that developed throughout the entirety of the show. And I knew that Jessica wasn't in this book, that was purely a show-made character. And so I was just, I was concerned that there wouldn't be very many redeeming qualities of Bill. But I feel like TV show Bill and book Bill are two totally different characters. I mean, yeah, appearance-wise, they're pretty similar and a couple surface characteristics. Sure, I get that they're alike. They're more... I don't know, somber-esque characters at times, but I don't know. I found that book Bill was deeper than 
TV show Bill, if that makes any sense. I felt like there was more to him, like a little bit more mystery that the show definitely tried to accomplish but didn't quite accomplish. I feel like there are so many show um, side storylines going on and I was curious to see how they would do this. Now, like I said, how the descriptions are really nice, I'm going to kind of contradict myself there. The descriptions of the outfits, nah, maybe not even that, just the outfits themselves were horrible. I mean, I get this is just a really dated thing and maybe it's just really not my taste or anyone's, but man, those outfits. I have one that I took a picture of because I thought I have to save this for a rainy day because it will make me smile. Bill said, wear those blue jeans that lace up on the sides. And she was explaining how they weren't denim at all, but some kind of stretchy stuff. Bill loved me in those jeans, which came down low more than once. I had wondered if Bill had some kind of Britney Spears fantasy going on. Since I was fully aware that I looked good in those jeans, I pulled them on, and a dark blue and white checkered short-sleeved shirt that buttoned up the front stopped and stopped about two inches below my bra. <sighs> and then the scrunchies throughout this the scrunchies. The scrunchy age needs to never come back, please. So yeah, I got I got laughs out of that, so maybe that adds to the humor of the book now. But I don't think it was intended to be like that. It, I got a kick out of it now, though. I thought it was funny. And Pam, ugh, okay. So Pam still had her awesome one-liners. I say still because I can't help it. I watched the show first. I'm sorry, but I, I just, I know which characters I'm going to like if they have any similarity to the show them. So I'm just, I'm really, really excited, especially for book four. I'm kind of an Eric fan, truthfully. I really liked the exchange when Eric and Sookie met. And I thought it was something like he said, oh, you're sweet. And she's like, no, not really. And then it was like this joke thing because blood's sweet. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like small little witty bits like that that I do enjoy. And I like being in Sookie's head. And it's not country overload because I do live in the South. I have very, very Southern people that I've gone to school with for years. And just like, I'm very familiar with that kind of thing. And I felt, I mean, she is obviously like more, the author is Southern, so she just really hit the nail on the head. She didn't go overboard with I reckon this or do -si do or so, I don't think she ever actually said do -si do But basically, I appreciate that it's not a caricature of the South and it's just, it's the South. I liked it. It's hard for me to review candy stories, so it's definitely more on the review side and less on the recap side, which is honestly what my reviews kind of are. They're more like recaps of the book and this is what I thought about to this event that happened. That's what they are. Overall, I really thought the world that she created was, again, just creative. Overall, I really think the world that she made was very creative and I like the different aspects of it. I like the synthetic blood thing. I like the coming out of the coffin thing. There's just a lot of it that I really like. I can't wait until I finish the rest of the series. I am quarter of the way into book two. I'm really liking that one a lot more than this one so far and so I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot more to gush over in that book. But yeah, I did enjoy this book still. I would probably give it a four, four stars? Three and a half, four stars? Not the best writing in the entire world but it was entertaining and it was a great candy read and that's just kind of what happens with candy reads. I still really liked them. Are they the best book I've ever read in the entire world? No, but I still enjoyed them and I'm gonna continue the series. I have a confession. Um, I borrowed the first book, this is a different copy, from my friend Megan who read the entire series and I decided to go ahead and just go to Half Price Books, see what they have there, and I bought the entire series, all for under 99 cents a piece. So I'm very pleased with that. So now I, I own the entire series, but see, I liked it enough to go out and buy like, what is it, 10 books? I think that's about it, so I will see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk where I will probably have a book haul or a bookshelf tour, that's what it's called, room? Is that right? Is it a tour? Bookshop tour? And then I will probably have the second book to this up. I'm gonna get through them really fast. This one did not take me any time at all, so expect a lot of these reviews. So I'll see you guys later. Bye. I kiss you, but I will leave prints on your pretty fur. She's attacking the camera pull, you can't see. So I'm going to talk about, I'm just talk about, oh my god. You can go ahead and keep watching. It's whatever you like. I feel like that was the intro to a song. Scrunchies, scrunchies, scrunchies.